One, two, three. That's me and the flippers. Michael Moyer, editor for Space and Physics in Scientific American. To understand why I'm diving over the side of the boat in search of my next meal, I've got to step back in time a bit. You see, our latest issue of Scientific American features an article by this guy, award-winning chef and author Bun Lai. He runs a sushi restaurant called Mia's in New Haven, Connecticut. Bun's article explains his philosophy on food, which involves catching and eating things he can find, especially if they don't belong here, so-called invasive species. On the menu at Mia's are unwelcome imports, like Asian shore crabs, wakame seaweed, and even poisonous lionfish. When we first meet, Bun serves me a nearly raw venison steak. It's great. Lean, tastes that pepper. Doesn't taste that gamey that you associated with. You know, bluefin tuna that someone is paying $200 a pound for or whatever is not any better than the venison that we're actually having. With a belly full of raw meat, I'm ready to join Bun for a trip to the notorious Thimble Islands. It's a very treacherous area because uh, there's all sorts of hidden rocks all over the place. Mm -hmm. um, but because it's so incredibly rocky, it's, it's an incredibly diverse ecosystem. So the habitat from one area to another is completely different. So what kind of shellfish are we going to be seeing out there today? Uh, well, we're going to go out and just kind of collect uh, wild uh, stock. So we're going to get hard shell clams, mussels, slipper shells that uh, shell fishermen hate. Uh, dead man's finger seaweed, which is also uh, considered like a fouling uh, um, organism. Interestingly, these are all ingredients that are in, uh, incredibly uh, delicious and nutritious at the same time. And when you're talking about uh, the seaweed that I just spoke about, or um, uh, the slipper shells, or the Asian shore crabs that we'll go for, um, uh, those are three ingredients that are incredibly abundant and also much more nutritious than any sort of farmed uh, animal uh, uh, fauna or flora uh, that we can possibly buy. Our first stop, a giant red buoy, a good place for invasive species to grab hold. Fossils. We've caught a healthy bunch of mussels with some weird looking worms attached to them. Yum, I hope we're not eating those. As our seafood bounty grows, my stomach starts to growl. I start eyeing the jars of herbs and spices Bun has brought along. Our next stop is a small rock outcropping, just big enough to harbor some tide pools. We are able to get some really cool stuff. You harvested a lot of these. You, uh, wow, you Kame seaweed, which uh, we're about six feet down or so. Sea bean. Sea bean, thank you. Yeah, sea bean. Uh, not an invasive species, but uh, really delicious. It actually tastes like the ocean. Uh, the round European variety of oyster. Um, not eaten as food around here. Now that we've collected our goodies, it's time to cook. As Bun fires up the walk, we sit down to discuss what we found. We did get a couple examples of really abundant uh, invasive species that are completely underutilized, actually not just underutilized, not utilized at all uh, in our culture. Uh, the first is a very, very popular uh, a green wakame that's indigenous to Korea and Japan that's um, that I grew up eating in miso soup. Okay. Um, but if you if we were to get miso soup at an ordinary restaurant, they would not have this in, you, in the U.S. That's you know what uh, they would have wakame, but it'd be uh, from uh, China or Korea or okay. Japan. Right. And uh, we really don't need to be importing this stuff. We've got tons of it. Well, I was literally pulling it off of the seafloor. The other thing is uh, rockweed, um, which is uh, not eaten as food here, but it's really delicious. And uh, the rockweed is covered with uh, an orange tunicate, which is uh, a fouling organism that uh, boaters and 
people who own property in the ocean or, or uh, fishermen who have traps don't like. Tunicates are eaten in Korea. Um, are largely considered gross out food over here, but we're gonna, we're gonna make it really good. And then along with this other stuff, we were able to collect non-invasive species. Uh, there's no fishery for mussels around here uh, because you don't get any, you don't make much money doing mussels. Sure. But they're abundant and uh, uh, most people around here don't even eat them. And not only that, we're going to eat these little things. This? Like this thing. Ooh. That looks unappetizing. The challenge for the chef is to take something like that. Right. And uh, looks, make it palatable. Looks like something out of an Aliens movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then I'm going to cook it and present it to you in a way that you want to eat it. Okay. I'm actually kidding. We're going to toss that. Okay. <laughs> I begin to wonder how these ingredients, collected from the murky depths of Long Island Sound, are going to taste. But as they simmer in a concoction of garlic, shallots, white wine, and star anise, my apprehension turns to hunger. All right, so here we have our invasive seaweed soup. Let's see how it goes. That's great. It tastes uh, like a really um, rich, um, but floral type of um, soup. It's got, a, I feel like there's a, like an orange peely flavor in here. To be honest, you know, whether or not tuna kit is delicious, it's hard for me to tell because there's a lot of other great stuff in here. But there's a there's a nice um, richness and mouthfeel to, uh, uh, to at least the wakame. Mm -hmm. As I finish off my last bites of invasive seaweed and tuna kits, I begin to wonder if we could really get rid of these pests by eating them. If everyone had a chef like Bun Lai, we might stand a fighting chance.